back guys to Not Coffee with Marky Marky as your host, all about the Raptors. Let's talk about some analysis on that first round series between the Magics and our fellow, our hometown Raptors. What are your thoughts about that series? For the Magic, um, first game, we were like, oh, like it's just a normal day. It's just like it, not really. <laughs> I uh, even I was in the Raptor fa- I'm a Raptors fan. I already know the Raptors is gonna win for it. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm just giving credit to, like I said last week too, is uh, giving credit to. Um, the coach Nick Nurse is because the whole season Vucevic was averaging 20, 16, mm-hmm. 20 points and 16 rebounds but this whole series it was nothing yeah. they stopped Marc Gasol stopped them and yeah mm-hmm. what about you guys Raptors fans <laughs> 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 you what? live here <laughs> I know you like the Philly but yeah oh are we talking about which one which series Magic's versus uh, okay Raps. so that was really we were all hoping for that sweep yeah. yeah, but that game one curse still lives on for yeah. it. That's why nobody was really scared. Were you scared when they lost the first game? We were just like, ah, this is like the Raptors. They do this all the time. Yeah. I just when I honestly, I was actually in the Philippines when I woke like with this game. So yeah. it was just like I woke up to it, watched the replay and everything. I'm like, all right, typical Raptors. We got we got them though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just I think it was a good kind of challenge for them. It wasn't like the most challenging. Like, I, I think. Uh, it would have been scary if they had to face Detroit with a healthier Blake Griffin. Yeah, that's true. Or Pacers with a healthier Victor Oladipo. But this was kind of a, a good, easy kind of, not easy, but a more, um, a good t- way to challenge them. Because technically, this team is put together in one year, mm-hmm. right? You still have new uh, faces with, with Danny Green, with Kawhi, Marcus Gasol, Jeremy, Jeremy Lin. And, and they need to know how to kind of gel together still. And, and this was a good series to kind of put uh, to put them to test and to kind of see how they would melt, mold together. And this was good because we saw Lowry struggling in the first game. We saw Kawhi uh, being sick. Mm. We saw you know um, a bunch of things in the series that would uh, kind of test them in a way so then they could be prepared for the second round. Which brings us to, uh, I think, the main topic right now, which is the Sixers versus the Raps series. What are you? Well, this is going to be a good debate <laughs> for us because. <laughs> You got a Philly fan and a, a diehard Raptors fan for us on our side. What are you, what are your thoughts? Preview. What do you what do you think we're gonna see in this matchup? I'm um, saying Raptors in six. Just putting it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of scared of Raptors because yeah. we're 0 three against the Raptors. Yeah. And ben, um, Kawhi stopped Ben Simmons. He had like 11 turnovers in one game, mm-hmm. and Embiid's record against uh, Mark Gasol. There were like 12 points, 13 points, 14, 15 points. The last three years, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, 0-3 against him. Mm-hmm. And he had like 5 out of 13. It was a bad. So that's the only thing I'm scared of the Raptors. Mm-hmm. But I think Kawhi's not going to stick um, Ben Simmons. He's going to stick Jimmy Butler. But Jimmy Butler, and our X factor, I think it's going to be Jimmy Butler. Because Jimmy Butler... When it comes to playoffs, he always find a way to score to make the team better, and yeah, I think he, I think we can beat the Raptors in seven. Oh, in game seven. Yeah. I just feel like the Raptors have more depth yeah. compared to Philly. I mm-hmm. mean, we have nine players that we can rely on, yeah. whereas with Philly, it's more like five, and maybe you have your occasional what yeah. between what, between the, the other two players as as yeah. their six man. But like out of them, I just feel like Raptors have the upper hand. Mm-hmm. Like Kawhi can probably shut down Ben Simmons if you look yeah. at a matchup. But potential- I don't think he's gonna stick Ben Simmons though. Well, I think, think, think the potential matchup could be yeah. you know Larry mm-hmm. with Ben or like Larry or I mean sorry, it would be um, Kawhi with Ben Simmons. You know mm-hmm. Larry with Butler mm-hmm. and then maybe Danny Green possibly with JJ Redick. And she's around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of and that or yeah. it could be all around. It could switch up depending on like if Larry is being consistent within the next like round of the series, right? So mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the key player in each in each team? I guess that would make a difference in terms of that could weigh in towards your favor of the Sixers or towards the favor of the Raptors. Which player on each side would be the one that you think? I think it's Jimmy Butler for the yeah. Sixers, and I think no. For me, the interesting matchup will be is Pascal and Tobias. Yeah. I think those that that matchup will be yeah. be really interesting because they're both play like they they play power forward like they. Technically, they can play small forward, power forward, mm-hmm. but they play. They starting as a power forward, mm-hmm. so that's gonna be a really interesting um, matchup. But I think it's Jimmy Butler who's gonna step up and mm-hmm. get the game. What about you? I was about to say, what about you? My my key player really is I think Lowry in terms of what he he will bring on the side of you know shooting and setting up 
everybody because the fact that you know Ben Simmons is going to play that point guard position still, but he's not going to be guarding him. Uh, he's going to have to kind of find a way to kind of take out the shooting from them, which he can do with JJ Redick. Because technically he's he's the only legit lethal shoot, shooter that they have. Yeah. And uh, and I think that Tobias Harris is good, but I think that Siakam can kind of uh, play him. Yeah. So it all depends on how well they defend JJ Redick, so that they can clog in the lane. Because I think they have enough body to kind of put on uh, Ben Simmons. They, it's uh, Kawhi can guard, can switch up on either one. So it'll be a nice matchup for him because him and Danny Green can switch up on Butler and, and, and Ben Simmons anytime. And I think Gasol would have, you know, would know how to defend Joel Embiid. So I don't know if they may render him use, uh, yeah. kind of not as effective as he, he was yeah. against the Nets. So it's all that and it all comes down to coaching. So yeah. if, if Brett Brown kind of knows how to adjust throughout the whole game and, and Nick, I think Nick Nurse has, has been doing that the whole season. Yeah. So he's more proven to adjust to to game, late game situations, to in game adjustments. Yeah. He's been very good at that throughout the whole season, even throughout the whole first round with the, with the Magic. So I kind of want to see what that what happens when he has to adjust. Let's say with Nick Nurse made adjustment in the starting lineup, putting yeah. Gasol to, uh, to go on and beat. How would uh, Brett Brown respond to that? Right. Yeah. So. I was actually about to agree with you on Kyle Lowry, yeah. yeah. just because he did since he did show up in the Orlando series and everything like his transitions has been amazing mm -hmm. so he can be able to carry forward that to the, to the next series mm -hmm. um he's been able to facilitate the team now properly mm -hmm. and i feel like you know that could help within our big win for against philly and stuff like that too so yeah 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 so you guys agree so you have my, i have sixers my sixers six. i gotta stay with my sixers <laughs> and you got i'm still sticking with the <laughs> I'm we're gonna you. find out i'm excited i'm excited about the series yeah. guys well, that's all we have, guys, for Pinot Crossover. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Before we end the show, any last words that you guys want to say to the audience? Um, just be ready for my article about Giannis Antetokounmpo, who couldn't pay a cab because he sent all his money to his family. So check out the article at pinotcrossover.ca. Awesome. Any last words, Ingrid, to the audience before we end it? Thanks for having me, guys. I'm glad to be back on the show, and I'll hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Awesome. Yeah. And that's all we have. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And other than that... Stay ballin'.